I seem to step on. It is Fiverr Friday. That is right. We are live on Fiverr Friday. It is, what day is it? September 25th. We are almost done with September. We've got a great show for you today. Today we are going to be talking about how do you get business if you're just starting out and you don't have any reviews? This was a great question that uh, was in the Facebook group. And I think this is a question that so many people ask, you know, and, and even if you have some, a few reviews, how do you get more work when you don't feel like you have the credibility to actually, you know, compete with people who might have thousands and thousands of uh, reviews and they've worked for all sorts of clients, you know, with big names and you don't have those names and you're like, what do I do? What do I do? So we're going to talk about that today and hopefully give you some good tips and options to get you some more work on Fiverr. Also real quick, if you're new to Fiverr Friday, welcome. Uh, what we do here is I kind of give you my little spiel in the beginning and then, uh, you post your questions, comments, anything like that in the chat and I go ahead and answer them for you so we can have a conversation and hopefully help you as much as possible. Uh, also, if you get an opportunity before we get started, hit that like, 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 and uh, uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. So every time I do go live or post a video, you get told. <laughs> All right. So let's get, I don't know where that came from. You get notified. I said told. I'm a goofball like that. Anyways, let's dive into this uh, topic today. Um, I actually feel really strong about this, and I'm, I was a big advocate for this for a long time, but I'm going to post something up here, all right, right here. We're going to see if this works. I'm trying out something fancy today. Bam. There it is. Right there. <laughs> this is the words that I want you to live by, especially if you are just starting out and trying to get up on Fiverr and platforms. No more. That's good enough. Cut it out. It's not. Okay. This is so important for me to get through to you. And I'm going to leave this thing up. By the way, I tried to... <laughs> out the post it but it didn't work so i had to use the white background i you know see i'm stepping in it you guys but you get the point the idea is again no more that's good enough i see this so many times especially when you're just starting out and you're trying to get going we do our very best and we get frustrated and we get tired of trying to figure out new skills. And what nobody really talks about when you're first coming in to voiceover or any online business is that there are a certain set of skills that really have nothing to do with voiceover that you have to get proficient at. But they have everything to do with you getting work online. And that is things like what I'm doing right now, being able to make a video, being able to make, <laughs> it's a poor example since I screwed up, but being able to make uh, effective thumbnails and um, assets, aka like pictures and things like that, being able to format them correctly, being able to uh, make videos with sound attached to it on your own with actual thumbnail pictures that you add words to and then being able to upload them, okay, and know how to manage all of that and then know how to fix it if it goes wrong. That's Those few things right there in themselves are such vital things to do. And a lot of times what happens is when you're just starting out, we get this horrible idea that right now we just, it's good enough. That's good enough. So reason why this cannot be done anymore for you to get work is that the word is out on Fiverr. All right, we know this. When I started about three and a half years ago on Fiverr, there was 7,000 gig offerings on, vo on the voiceover section. Now there's over 21,000 gig offerings or close to it. And it just continues to grow 
at a wild pace. Now, this does not mean that you can't get business. On the contrary, I think this is wonderful because it shows how much business is going through Fiverr and that it keeps growing. But what it means is that you cannot just put up willy-nilly things on your account, especially when you're beginning, and hope to get some business. We're going to talk about a few other things, but this is so... This is everything right here. Honestly, your attention to detail, it will determine your success. Now, of course, all right, I am under the assumption, okay, and I know it's a big assumption, but I'm under the assumption that you can record, you have some editing and mastering skills so that you can produce a high quality professional product. If you can't do that, that has that clearly has to take precedence to anything that I'm talking about here, okay? However, I do want to point out that the equipment that you have, you know, you can start with any equipment, but the equipment that you have, depending on the level it's at, you know what I mean, and the quality of it, will determine how far you can go in creating a professional sound. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to digress from this uh, online uh, computer skills as I was just talking about, but it's important to note that you know I work with a lot of, of really talented, amazing voice actors, and I absolutely love it. And I notice that a lot of times uh, I, I get questions about, hey, Anthony, I'm just, can you please look over my EQ? Can you please look over my stuff that I'm doing? How does it sound? Am I doing it right? I feel like something's missing. What I see is, is that the voice actor, 90% of the time, they're doing everything they possibly can to EQ, to get rid of mouth clicks, to make their, their voices sound as good as possible, but their equipment has limits too. So please don't forget that your equipment has limits too. And I know, again, I, I said I digress, but I just want to point that out. But that's the, you, you got to have a good quality, high quality product. All right. So going back to your computer skills, okay, being able to, you know, work uh, effectively uh, and, and show better than everyone else on the platform or at least reach that level where people are looking for someone to work with and they come upon your offerings and they see they see your thumbnail. Don't forget when you're first starting out or when you've been on there for years or anywhere, Listening to your demo is actually the third thing people do. The first thing they do is they got to look. Do not underestimate how important the visual aspect is of everything. It's vital to your success. So first, they have to look. Second, they have to click. You have to entice them by your thumbnail, the quality so we're talking about how you just starting out can get work without credibility. You build credibility immediately through the professionalism of your offerings. Does that make sense? The professionalism you are showing by the execution of simple formatting and high quality, high resolution type pictures goes a long way to give people confidence in your quality. Do not underestimate this. You will do it at your own peril, okay? Because if you, you know, it, it, it means uh, that someone coming by will either stop and click on you or just keep on going and not even pay you any attention. And by the way, this happens in a split second. I mean, this happens in an eighth of a second. Okay, subconsciously and everything, we see things and we make split decisions on them. And our minds determine whether or not we feel they are professional or not professional, et cetera, et cetera. Do we relate to it? All these neurons are firing in our brains. We have to take that in consideration. Do you notice this whole little diatribe here has been nothing about voiceover? It's been about how appealing your actual thumbnail is. And by the way, I want to point this out. It really has nothing to do with how attractive you are. I have to say that. I need to say that out loud. And I'm going to tell you why. Well, I mean, I, for the longest time, stressed out about, you know, just the fact that I'm like, you know, who, no one's going to want to watch me online. I'm a fugly dude. I'm losing my hair. See, now I wear a hat so you can't see it. I'm losing my hair. It's gone. 
All right. You know, I'm not on the cover of GQ magazine here, but this is important. I I know you know what I'm talking about. We think about these things, right? I know I did. I was worried about my picture. I was worried about what people thought about me. You know what I mean? But I nicely hit it with this idea that, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not ready for it. We have to get you got to get past that. You have to. I promise you people are more interested of what you can do, not what you look like. All right. And it's important to get that. But it it took me a while. I say this to you now after making all these videos and you all know these hundreds of videos. I come to you saying that with uh, at least, you know, an idea in my mind that you all care for me, not because of the way I look. All right. So it's important to know that if I can do it, you can, too. All right. So get that out of your mind. Now, I am aware of perception. Okay, so that's why I was worried about doing videos and stuff in my hobo fort. Okay, I get that. But the point is, is that you need to take great pictures of yourself, high quality pictures. Please do not use pictures from, you know, 1985 when you thought it was a good year and your hair was just perfect and you were skinny and everything was was firing on all cylinders for you. No, take some up to date photos. All right, maybe you had some hair in 1985, but t- but take some up to date photos, okay, and 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 make sure you format everything correctly for your thumbnail. And we're working on Fiverr, which means that there are people out there who actually do thumbnails on that platform who are really good. All right, and I mean, you know, we have some people in our group who do them as well. It's just it does not hurt to use other people to help you with your thumbnails. So that's one thing that I think is a vital aspect that you as a new person can really focus on. And if you were to ask me, Anthony, is it really that important? Yes, it is really that important. It is so important. Okay. Next thing. It is uh, when people finally get a chance and, and, and you entice them with your photo and they click on you, you have to stand out. And I've been saying this recently, and the people I work with know know this, but you know, whenever any of us do training or or anything like that, it's always about skills, the craft, things like that with acting stuff. But there's very I don't think there's a class that I've ever heard or seen or or been a part of that actually was how to stand out of the crowd from everybody else to just get noticed. And this is a big deal now on Fiverr, especially since there are so many gigs there and voiceover. How do you stand out? Okay. Well, first and foremost, you stand out by being you, not being a shy you, but buying you. And you'd be like, Anthony, I'm shy. Well, you got to you, you got to at least project. All right. That people can see you and relate to you. But I'm talking about your writing your descriptions, your profile descriptions. Who are you and why should people work with you? Okay, this is so important as well. If people can't relate to you and they can't see themselves hiring you, then they're not going to work with you. Keep that in the back of your mind, especially when you're starting out. You have so much to offer. It doesn't have to be thousands of voiceovers you completed. You have an entire life of experiences of thoughts, of dreams, of happiness and sadness and excitement and pain. That is what it, we that's what this is all about. Us expressing those emotions relating to people through what we do. Your job though, especially when you're starting is to make sure you clearly get that across to your client, the person who is looking at you, meaning that your copy Your written copy has to be done well. And on a side note, do me a favor. Please do not go on Fiverr and go look at somebody who's been on Fiverr for 10 years and say, well, I don't know why Anthony's telling me to do this because they just have a couple of things and and they're they're always on the front page. Don't pay attention to that, okay? (laughs) That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you focusing on you, okay? Because this is not just, yes, this is about Fiverr, but this is about more than Fiverr. This is about your entire voiceover business, whether it's on Fiverr, whether it's on Upwork, whether it's on Voices.com or Voice123, whether it's on your own personal website, whether you are a sag after actor, doesn't matter who or where you are. This is vital to your success. You are Yoda. 
Your client is Luke Skywalker. You've got to make them look fantastic. They are the star. You are there to make them the star. And it's also your job to make them understand that your experiences, your life experiences can uniquely help them grow their business. So you've got to talk about the most important vital experiences you've had in your life and why that then helps them. Okay, this is this is copy. All right, that you're writing here. This is persuasive copy that you're writing. Okay, it's sales copy, but it goes beyond that. This is what we are today. We don't get a chance, as we know, to <laughs> meet a lot of people anymore. We're all stuck in our houses. Okay, more than ever, though, we still crave that interaction, that knowledge of who we're working with, who we're hiring. Can we relate to them? So you've got to put yourself out there and then tailor your words so that people know that your life experiences are going to really help them. It's about them. All right. So that's enough of that. The other part to this whole thing on Fiverr is whatever you do, fill out everything. Fill out everything. Make sure your make sure everything is you'd be surprised of spellings, how much people spell things wrong, how bad grammar is. Now, on a side note for grammar, clearly we know the titles on Fiverr because everything has to start with I will can be, you know, we're trying to stick things in a title. It can sometimes be grammatically incorrect. I get that. But for the rest of your copy and everything, make sure things are grammatically correct. Also, make sure that you are being aware of that most of the business, like 60 to 65% of my business is overseas. And so much of my business comes from people who speak um, you know, English as a second or third language. So make sure that you, know, you might be a really talented writer and, and uh, you, know, uh, you express things really well through words. Just remember that you might be dealing with people who can't read uh, English very well. So, you know, go easy on how much you push the boundary. There. You know, don't don't write a bu- beautiful, poetic um, uh, description about you changing the world, you know, um, you know, with uh, in the universe and time and space. And, you know, just <laughs> keep it straightforward. But how you and your experiences are going to help them succeed. Don't be afraid to put the process down that you're going to use people like processes. Okay, don't be afraid to say by now. At the end by now fill out all of your stuff. All 10 FAQs. Fill out as many extras as possible. Make sure you have all of your offerings put up on Fiverr. If you're starting out, you've got seven gigs, put them all up. Make sure they are the highly trafficked gigs, right? We've got uh, not only your normal voiceover, your regular commercial gig, but you also have podcast intros and outros, phone messaging and IVR. We've got Halloween right around the corner. Put up a Halloween gig, okay? We've got what? Meditation. Okay, you've got e-learning, you've got explainer videos, you've got all of these things that you can put up. Deep voice, funny voice, character voices, any, all these different options. Maybe you do impre- uh, impressions. Okay, maybe you're an impersonator. Put up as much as you can to get in front of as many people, but whatever you do, do not put up stuff just for the sake of putting it up. Make sure every single thing you put up is to the very best that you can do it. And whatever you do, no more that's good enough. It has to be that's freaking awesome. All right. I'm going to go ahead and remove the (laughs) post-it. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, that's That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now is the time for you to ask questions and make comments, uh, and I would love to answer them. So let's go over to the board, and let's see who we got. We got Greg. What's up, Greg? Howdy. We got Scott. Happy Friday. Good to have you, Scott. We got Tom. Hello, hello. It took three minutes to for me to find this today on YouTube. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry, Tom. Uh, let's see. Out of work professor. Greetings and salutations. Yes. I hope you are having a great Friday. Thank you. I am. Um, Jeremy Hurst. Happy Friday. What's up, Jeremy? Uh, Zach. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, Angela. 
Voice over Angela. Let's see, Trevor, howdy. We got Frank, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Frank. We've got Neil, thank you for teaching the nuts and bolts of a Fiverr strategy. Listen to Anthony, listen and just do it. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that. Um, by the way, just on to piggyback off what Neil said, I, I and this is this happens a lot. Um, if you do these things and you have a quality product to offer, you will get work. If you are not getting work, chances are one of these things I've mentioned today is not firing on all cylinders. Okay, whatever you do, don't. Just say that's good enough, right? <laughs> Pop it back up, Anthony. Don't just say that's good enough. Don't you do it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm like a weirdo. Thank you guys for watching The Weirdo. Uh, let's see. Frank, thinking of buying a Zoom H5 for recording when on vacation. Should I buy the SGH6 shotgun mic attachment for it as well? Good question, Frank. I have seen... That and personally, I I would just I would I would rather you buy the Cinco D two, all right, and a small little you know uh, holder for your shotgun mic for a couple hundred dollars than you buy the shotgun mic for the Zoom H five. Uh, I know it, I, and I'm not sure how much that shotgun mic costs. I'm assuming the the Cinco D two is a little more expensive, but I think I think it's around two fifty is the Cinco D two, but it is so worth it. I know that shotgun mic is not going to record what you think it's going to, how good do you think it's going to record? So that would be my recommendation. Uh, but, you know, if it's impossible for you to do anything else, it's better than nothing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Famicom Mike, what's up? Wise words, Anthony. We still have Fiverr Elite Group tomorrow. Absolutely, sir. We do have Fiverr Elite Group. Thank you for bringing that up. So, by the way, if you are just on a, it's plug time for the Fiverr Elite Group. So, we have this group called Fiverr Elite. We meet on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, we meet tomorrow, Saturday morning at 10 uh, a.m. Eastern Time. And this group is all about getting together, helping like minded people grow their Fiverr business. We also do voice acting, coaching, marketing, etc. Etc. Et and uh, we've got an amazing group. We've got a bunch of top-rated sellers in there. Uh, wonderful participation. Awesome act, voice actors, and uh, it's just a lot of blast. So if you'd like to be a part of that, there'll be a link below, or you can go to aviosjourney.com and check that out. So thank you, Famicom Mike. Uh, let's see, Dave G. How can someone have three reviews and be level two? Uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Baramba. He a good guy. Uh, how can, <laughs> um, so Dave, this is, this is what happens. A couple things. One, usually that means one of two things. That means one, f that that person has changed their account. All right. And they brought Fiverr, um, moved it over to them or two, they deleted the gigs that had all of their reviews. Okay, and it got rid of them. So that that's something that happened. I've seen that happen a couple of times. So that's how that works, Dave. Uh, let's see, Nick Denton VA. What's up, Nick? Hey, Anthony and everyone. Question: I know, Ant, you've spoken the PDF uh, in the gig before. What sort of things should I put in there? Just extra details or equipment? Good call, Nick. So when I when I was um, before I had my aesthetically pleasing <laughs> studio set up, right? I had my Hobo Ford, I had all of my stuff, but again, I was fully aware perception is very important. So what I did was I created a collage, and this is what I recommend this for you. This is a great question, Nick. I created a collage of my equipment from photos online, right? So I had my Sennheiser, I had, you know, my iMac, I had my 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 JBL monitors, my interface, et cetera, et cetera. And I created a collage and I put that into a PDF file and said, this is the professional equipment that I'm using. And so people could view that. And it was a nice picture. People could view it. All right. So that's one thing I did. I used for PDF file. Also, Nick, you have a lot of, uh, I know you, Nick. So I know you have a lot of um, books and voiceover work under your belt. Put some of that down. 
put up your process down. This would be a great opportunity for you to put peep think about it this way. When you go buy something, you read reviews, you read uh, the 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 information about, you know, what, you know, what uh, what the manufacturer has to say. We read all of these things and then we buy. Right? We don't just blanketly go buy something. And if we do, it's after lots of thought, right? But the, the point is, is that this is a great opportunity for you to put those things down too. So resumes are great. Uh, you know, may, your pricing options, you know, if you're doing audiobooks, write down, you know, with the audiobook process, write down, you know, just all kinds of things. It, it makes you look more professional. You're more built out. People like to see that you care about your business, especially as a newbie. The more you show that you care, right, the better. Perfect example. I kicked off a new uh, on Upwork uh, a, a week or so ago, and you know I hadn't been on I hadn't been on Upwork for years. And I started, and with some friends' help, right, getting myself set up and everything, I put all of my professional stuff on there and decked everything out. And as I started sending things, what happened? I actually got business right away. All right, I made like $350 in two days off of the free things. And I'm telling you, it's not because I'm any more talented than anybody else. I really believe it's because of the level of presentation I put out my stuff that I have now as opposed to when I first started. Okay, so these PDF files are great ways for you to add extra information and for people to say, wow, that person's, you know, even more professional. They really give a crap about their business or they wouldn't even have put that there. No one else seems to have anything there. That's pretty interesting. All right. It makes you stand out. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, out of work professor AP, have you ever thought of having guests on your YouTube or live videos to tell how they applied things from a VO's journey and how it led to success. It might be fun and interesting. Hmm, that's really good. That's a good idea. I guess I could do that. Yeah, I don't know. See, now I got to figure out how to do that. So now you're going to get me in that mind. Yeah, you know, like just having guests. Absolutely. I use OBS. I'm sure there would be a way to use OBS, you know, like you have to maybe be on like a, me a Zoom meeting or something like that. Do you know what I mean? That that we could do it through and then stream it on OBS is like it's very intriguing <laughs> to me <laughs> to figure this out. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, I love that. You know, I've had some people on the podcast, but um, because of my work schedule, it's definitely been crazy and it can be hard. I mean, by the way, especially for because this is this is about new people too, and and even about you veterans. You know, this stuff, as you can tell, it takes a lot of time. Like when I say this stuff, like the, the social media, the doing these videos, putting these this content out, it takes time contacting people, setting up dates, working with their schedules. I mean, this takes a lot of time. And on top of that, you're trying to, you know, continue to do the voiceover work, continue to market, you know, continue to do all the other things. But you do. I mean, it's tough. You're you're absolutely right. It's worth it. But it can be a challenge and, you know, it's a quite a steep learning curve. But you as a new person, do not shy away from it. Do not shy away from it. And don't you dare say that's good enough. I know you're probably tired of that. I'm sorry. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Wonderling VA, Greg brought me here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Greg. And thank you for being here. B dog at 45. What's up? Uh, headshot, black and white or color? Great question. So mine, uh, I have some in black and white and I have some in color. I've varied up. Some pictures lend themselves really well to black and white, some really well with color. I'm like a person in the middle. I like both. So, you know, try both. Uh, Nick, I got offered promoted gigs today. Sweet. Trying it out. Don't know if any Brits have tried it and it's worked. If not, yes, uh, I do know. I have some students um, and who uh, are Brits and they've tried it out and it's working tremendously for them. So, you know, go for it, Nick. Zach, I don't have to be at work during Fiverr Elite tomorrow. <laughs> nice. It's always fun to see Zach. He, he builds cars, and he's always like in a, in a plant, and it's lots of fun. Um, let's see. Brad, what's up? Hey, Brad's from Twitter. Fantastic, Brad. You're the man. Uh, can you talk a little about Fiverr or buyer requests? It's working for me to start, but see others struggling. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the the – 
f- buyer requests used to be the place and and uh, the, to really go and get work, right? Uh, especially for new people. And there still is opportunities there if you're brand new to go to the buyer request section. This is a section on Fiverr where people go and post jobs that either they don't see an offering or they don't know uh, what to do or they like the idea of bidding. You know, where people get to, you know, just like Upwork, you send a proposal to an offer that someone has put out or a job. Same thing with the buyer request. Someone puts out a job and people send offers to it. Okay. You get up to 10 a day. However, Fiverr recently, well, I wouldn't say recently, maybe within the last six months, switched it around to where as you're just beginning, you only get to see a couple and you get more as you move up the levels. Uh, it used to be it didn't matter what level you were at, you saw all of them. But um, and most and a lot of times when you're just starting out, a lot of those are different, you know, different like people looking for different languages, things like that. Uh, I fully recommend that you know you you know take a chance on something, send out something. Hey, I know you're not looking for this right now, but I could help you unless they actively ask you not to. All right, but. In most cases, the best thing to do is, you know, be fair, keep to your prices. This is important. I've lost a lot of work on both ways because someone is quoted that they have a budget of X amount and it actually costs less according to my pricing, but I've I've sent them what they budgeted. <laughs> And they're like, wait a minute, it doesn't cost that much. You're a scammer. I'm never working with you. All right, that's happened to me. Or it's too low. And uh, but I but here's the deal. You know what I mean? You don't just because something they say like five dollars, you don't have to send them a quote for that. They might have just put that down. They might really like your work. Okay, so you know, don't be afraid to actively participate in buyer requests. You get 10 a day, but don't be frustrated, you know what I mean, if it's if it's slim pickings at first, okay? Consistency is key. I, I work with a lot of people who do get work from buyer requests, even just starting out, okay? But it can be hard. Go on. I, my recommendation is pick three different times a day to go on to buyer requests and check it out. Just check it out if it's there. All right. Good question. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Michael, great info as always. Thank you. Uh, in your opinion, can you quickly list some paid app subscriptions, etc., that someone should be considering investing in? Continued. I'm pretty set up as far as I can tell, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Michael, I'm not quite sure what you mean by invest in app subscriptions, uh, so I mean, well, maybe, maybe I'll take a stab at it. Maybe what you mean. So part of what we do too, is being able to be fast, right? Because we got to do a lot and it's just us. So me, like for me personally, having access to high quality pictures, photos, high quality music, uh, even stock video, these kinds of things make a big difference. Okay. Uh, I've used audio blocks. For a long time, that's a subscription-based uh, program or um, website that you know gives you uh, music. But I've I've recently um, signed up and bought a year subscription to Envato, E N V A T O, uh, Envato Elements, um, and it's about fifteen dollars a month if you pay two hundred dollars for the year. Um, um, but you basically it, it's incredible. They've got. Uh, everything from a ama- like you know uh, up to uh, up. I guess what I'm trying to say is their music is fantastic, their effects are great, but their stock footage is great, their stock photos are great, and also their effects are fantastic. They've got like stingers and sweeper, you know, like just sweepers and all kinds of stuff for imaging purposes as well. Because you know, podcast intros and outros are really growing for me as well. So having a place where I can get that stuff is really good. So I'm assuming you know. That's what you're talking about. So Envato Elements is a really awesome place to go as well. I actually have, uh, Michael, that'll have to be something that we do differently because I actually, you know, um, pay about 18 different services. You know, like, for example, Restream, this what I'm streaming with you guys on right now, you know, that I'm able to go. I pay for that service. Um, You know, I pay for all sorts of stuff. My player, VoiceZam. 
voice zam uh, i pay for my player for my website you know the player that plays my demo it also keeps statistics of people downloading my demo um i pay for now i pay for my website uh, on a monthly basis because of i've the importance of looking we were i was talking about being professional when i first started i was like well i'm gonna do wordpress and i'm gonna learn because i'm not gonna spend money Okay, and that was the right decision at first because I didn't know what I was doing. But as I went along, I realized, listen, there's no way I'm just not I'm not a coder. I don't want to spend all the time it takes to learn how to build out an entire website. That's not the the focus of my business. So I went with a company who, you know, um, has a massive template. They're called Kajabi. I can put a link below, but I mean, it's a monthly fee, but it is so worth it. I mean, if you've been to a VO's journey, there's no way I could have built that on my own. No way. I mean, it manages hundreds of people and subscriptions and billing and all sorts of things. And my VO business, people purchase through, uh, they purchase voiceovers through my website. Uh, and it can all happen. It all is done on my website, you know, like Fiverr. So, you know, I really recommend you looking at things and services as opposed to always, you know, do the best you can when you're first starting off. But it should be about making money to reinvest in growing your business to look as professional and run as professional as possible. Good question, Michael. Uh, but Michael, I've got so many that we, we could we'd have a, a long conversation, so I don't have time on time to hear. Uh, Nick says, "Splendid, glad to know it works for us British folks. <laughs> you British folk, of course, absolutely." Works for it's working. It's working. I think for for a lot of people, uh, Michael. Yes, those are the things I was looking. Okay, sorry, uh, Dana. Would you still recommend Mike Russell's VO chain of ENCN normalization compression normalization for newbies starting out? Absolute, absolute. Actually, no. Now I don't. When I first started, and I know I think I have videos up, and I've got things up, and I need to redo those. I actually uh, have. Um, something that, uh, I recommend now and I've actually, you know what? Um, let's see. I, okay. So I've put together what, I mean, with all the, the things that I've learned and stuff, a six step process for your chain. Uh, what I was doing while I'm looking around here is cause I actually have a, um, let me see if I can bring it up for you. But I actually have an infographic that I created, and I was going to show you guys. So let's see here. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Here we go. Okay, so let me switch you around. Here we go. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Is, uh, is it this one? No, it's not that one. No. Oh, there we go. I don't know where that random gentleman was on a... <laughs> okay, so you, you should be seeing my screen. And uh, this is an infographic that I created. Uh, and basically, this is the six-step process that I put together. Uh, and I really recommend that you follow this process. So first, the big thing is you want to record in between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. All right? The first thing you want to do after you record at this level, this is vital recording it. Uh, most people I see first starting out, they record really low, right? Because they're afraid the more they turn up their gain, they realize how much background noise they have. Or their preamp is loud and they're not even aware of that because they don't understand that some, you know, all, not all uh, preamps uh, and interfaces are created equal. So, you know, some of the uh, less expensive ones starting out are actually louder. They make noise. Um, and you 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 pick up that your your feedback and your um, your XLR and on your mic picks that up. But anyways, you need to record between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. You start out. The first thing you do is prepping your file, meaning like, you know, you're getting rid of any, you know, extra spaces that you had here or there, just getting the file ready to start working on. Now, this is the biggest thing that I did differently. OK, um, by the way, to, to your about the normalization as we start, this is what you replace the normalization with. Does that make sense? You're actually recording it at the right level. Um, if you were editing other files, you might have to do something by raising it up. But your own stuff, you need to record, you know, start recording at the right levels. Then you go into the EQ. Then you go into compression. Then after you do these things, after you've manipulated the audio and done everything you've needed to do with brightening it up, removing any you know um, bad. Uh, uh, 
frequencies that are causing you issues. Then we move on to the bottom part here, which is you're going to be removing mouth noise and breaths, okay, reducing background noise. And then at the very end, this is something personally I do because most of the, the people I work with now, they actually um, they actually don't uh, want files that are um, not fully edited and mastered and everything. So I want to fully edit and master everything. Then I want to boost to about negative one dB. Okay. Um, so basically what I do is I boost that up and do a soft limit at negative one. And then I save it as either a WAV file or an MP3. Okay. And that's my process. A lot of times people begin with this process, the bottom process, and they don't, they, and then they, they weave in the top process, the EQ and the compression. Then they end up doing the bottom process again, and you, ha you end up with this crazy processed file. All right. And that's kind of what happens. And, you know, so this, you know, that's something that I would really, um, recommend you follow and do not do that, you know, where you're processing multiple times because that's when you start getting files that sound like they're cut off at the end, right? You know what I'm talking about? If you've edited or, or mastered a file and it sounds like, why are my words being cut off? It's so frustrating, right? That's that's why, because you're just over-processing it and stuff, and you just don't have the right process yet. So hopefully that will. Uh, looks like, please, please, please put that infographic in the Facebook group. Absolutely. You got it. Um, so I hope that helped, Dana, and I will put that in the group. Um, Jeremy Hurst says, I feel called out. <laughs> what? No. No one's called out. Okay, so, all right, is there any other questions or comments? I really thank you guys today. I really appreciate it. Great, great questions, great interaction. Thank you as always. Again, if you're interested in joining the Fiverr Elite Group or, by the way, on a side note, I've actually just redid, I stayed up like 4 o'clock in the morning, redid all of the demo, uh, our, our demo page because, you know, I offer demos. Um, and recently I've been realizing how important they are for so many of my students. So, you know, there'll be a link below to check out the demo page if you're in need of a demo. Um, we've got all kinds of different options there. So, you know, I... Uh, I hope to uh, uh, hope you get a chance to check it out because I, I think you'll like it. Uh, let's see. Dana says, thanks for that. Definitely helped. That was an analysis paralysis point for me. Awesome. I'm glad it helped. And I will post that again. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. And I will see you soon. All right. Goodbye. Peace.